Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for another educational webinar. I'm pleased today to be joined by Tony Lynn Davis, who's going to be talking to us today about some sales tools and specifically how to convert discovery calls. Um, we're excited to be able to have her, I think, for a multi-part webinar series. So this is going to be part one of a few. Uh, so we're, we're starting off a partnership. Um, so just to, just to uh, start things off, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Tony. Uh, Tony Lynn Davis is a wife, mother, sister, daughter, and a passionate master business sales consultant, proudly serving wellness practitioners. Um, for over 25 years, Tony has built successful, thriving, multi-million dollar wellness built businesses in such areas as fitness, resort and spas, integrative clinics, online practices, and mind-body studios. Uh, she designs cutting-edge sales systems and procedures that support wellness practitioners like yourself to generate more income and create greater results through innovative programming. Through her proven business coaching system, Tony takes steps to ensure her coaching clients receive the best possible tools to reach their success. Um, her vision is crystal clear. Uh, strategy is direct and bold. Her leadership is contagious and inspiring. Her own mantra is actually, I help healers heal people. people. Um, she's got a lot going on. She's very busy, so we're pleased to be able to be joined by her. Tony, thanks so much for joining us and take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Cameron, and you're welcome, and thank you for everything and all the support. I'm so thrilled about this partnership. We've worked in the past hand in hand and as natural partners and full script merged, it's just become really crystal clear that your practitioners, you know, get to get a ton of support from so many different resources. And it makes it just makes a lot of sense that we also get to support them in the area of sales, right? It's great revenue. So let's just get started. Um, thanks, Cameron, for the bio read. Um, I just want to give a couple quick housekeeping um, tips here. So for those of you who are on this call, fantastic. If you have to jump off before we finish, that's okay, because obviously it's recorded and we're gonna be sending it out to all of you. Um, I see there's over 75 people that have joined us, which is great. And I know that some of you are probably gonna have questions because I'm gonna go kind of fast so I can get as much out for you today. Um, at the very end, I'll have a slide with how you can contact me. And if you have specific questions about your sales and your business, your programming, your pricing, which we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, you, just any, any way that you can handle your discovery call and or create more revenues for yourself, I'm happy to serve you and be here for you. So let's dive into the discovery call. The reason we wanted to start with this is really clear for me. When I work with practitioners, and I have for many years, and I work with a lot of the marketing components of, of the uh, wellness space, what always seems to happen is no matter how great your funnel is, no matter how great your systems are, and at your marketing and your Facebook ads and all the list build you're doing, we create these leads and then we don't know what to do with them, right? So I've been teaching this webinar actually for many practitioners all over the place. And it, it just keeps kind of the feedback has just been like, wow, I never thought about it that way. I wasn't looking at it that way. And I'm just gonna give you like my no BS, you know, way of doing these discovery calls so that you can be uh, really an alignment with the people that you want to serve. So what I want to start off with is just talking a little bit about sales methodology. Most practitioners, in fact, I, I would say 95% of the practitioners I know and work with and are blessed to you know, hang around with, don't come from the world of understanding sales at all. Um, it's scary. you know. They don't want to do it, but they know they need to do it for their practice. Um, they think that if they just have a price sheet or some pricing on their website, that that's enough. Um, or, you know, they don't really understand um, how to take an opportunity, because that's really what it is, and turn it into a relationship and, a, and, and you know, a, um, a viable business platform for themselves. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the science of sales. I figure you're all practitioners on some level, so the science is probably important to you as well. And I want to talk about the methodology. So old methodology, which is obviously changed the old methodology for many, many years in sales training. I've been doing this for over 30 years, by the way, is very little rapport, you know, very, very little bit about the person's problem, a lot about the product, you know, like how it's going to solve everything in the world and then an offer and then a hard close and hard close. You know, we were taught way back in the day, like you want to keep, you know, just going after people and after people and after people and after people. And what ends up happening, and as we've seen through emotional development, is the EQ of sales has changed so dramatically because people want to be heard. And we live in a time now where people aren't heard at all. You know, we have so much social media 
And when we're dealing with people with health and wellness issues, they especially want to be heard and they want to be, they want to be listened to, which we're going to talk, talk a little bit about. But the real methodology now is building huge rapport. So where I want you to put your energy and your focus and your time is, is building rapport with them and creating their vision for their health. So if they come to you and they have um, an autoimmune disease, let's say, or they want to lose weight, they've probably been suffering for a while and it's probably costing them something in their life to continue to not take action in their health. So what we want to do is actually create as much love and friendship in that beginning part, create their vision, offer your solution, but not in a way that's salesy because I'm not into salesy. And then what I call the transition into making them a financial offer. So when we get into the closing of your sale, it really should be this pyramid. It should be, I've built a lot of rapport. I've gotten to know this person and, and also I've decided that we're a good fit for one another because not everybody is your right client, let's face it. And now I've made the offer. So the science of sales, which I've been studying for a long time, is that people buy emotionally and they justify logically. And the numbers have actually changed. It's funny. I went to build this webinar about six months ago and I just decided to do some Googling. And it used to be about 75 to 25% or even like 80 to you know 20%. And it's changed so much more, this 90 to 10% logical. So I always use the example of the Apple phone. So Apple comes out with a new phone, people rush to get it. There was nothing wrong with your existing phone, but you need the new phone, right? And I'm a businesswoman. So it'd be like, when I when somebody says, why do you need the new phone? I am immediately gonna go into, oh, you know, I needed all the new apps, I needed all the bandwidth, I needed the new camera for my business. You know, it's like, I'm just gonna justify it logically. But the truth of the matter is I wanted it because it's cool and it's slick and it's new and it's this or it's that, right? So people do that in their world. And you can think about your own <laughs> consumer habits. Um, you want that new car, you want that new TV, you want that new computer, you want whatever, whatever it is that you're looking for. And then we end up justifying it logically. So the same thing holds true, but when, when I work in the health and, well, in the health and wellness space pro supporting providers, one thing is essential is that these people are so, it's all driven by emotions. Nobody really wakes up logically and thinks, oh, I wanna lose weight today. It's emotional. There's the, my genes don't fit. I feel like hell. I can't get into a relationship. I don't feel good. I don't feel sex, whatever. Or I've been suffering for so long with this autoimmune. And now I'm looking to go a little bit deeper and get the, the support I need. So in the beginning, what's important is in that relationship building piece is to break down the emotional barriers. Let's face it, we all have fear and I don't know you from Adam. So I know number one, I wanna do something for my health and wellness. So I was, I was moved to make contact with you. That's your emotional piece right there. Somebody booked a call with you. Somebody gave you their email. Somebody is spending time with you. They are committed to finding out about you. So what we get to do is break down any barriers that might be holding them back from taking action in their life. And that's part of the building connection. And we do that by asking open-ended questions. You know, you don't want to be completely um, uh, clinical at this stage. You really want to be like, where, you know, where are you calling from? <laughs> you know, tell me a little bit about you. Like get to know them a little bit more so they get comfortable in saying yes to you and speaking to you. And then really listen to what they're saying because you'll be able to clue into some of the fears that they may have of taking action for themselves or uh, opening their wallet or um, yeah, you know, they've tried everything before and it's failed. Well, that has to do with them. You know, that's a mindset thing. So you want to be clued into where are they coming from? What are they saying? And you're going to do that all in the beginning. So that's really the science behind the sales is the emotional components that go into doing your discovery call. And if you do this and you set yourself up for each call and you're really listening, and I'm going to give you some bullet points here about the skill set of listening, is be completely present, like be completely present. Nobody wants to feel like they are, you know, not welcomed on that call or that face to face or if it's in your clinic, you know, especially if you're busy and you know that you're going from, let's say, a consultation to presenting a package and let's say it's a twenty five thousand dollar package to work with you for 12 months, they deserve to have that attention during that, that time. So if you're doing discovery calls, as in sales calls on the phone, you know, make sure that before all the calls you get centered, you know, I would say breathe, turn off your screens, give them, 
you know, distract, limit their distractions for you, but give them your undivided attention. And um, smile on the phone. It actually does come through and it makes you feel better anyway, right? So, uh, so let's talk about the principles of the sales call. There's five key components to the sales call. One is building rapport. And that should usually last usually about five to 10 minutes. You really wanna to get to understand them, to break down the emotional pain barriers so that they'll open up to what's really happening for them. So the next key to that is understanding their needs, you know, basically their pain points, or as some of us say is what hell are they in? So if somebody is going through an autoimmune or suffering from, you know, needing detox or weight loss or whatever the case it is, something's happening in their life that has triggered them. And that trigger is where you want to move them through. And this is how we go from building rapport to creating vision. So we want to, and we're going to go through, I'm going to give you some scripting here as well, but we want to move from building rapport to creating vision. And the only way you can create vision is you have to get through the challenges first. So understanding what their needs are is really a big component before you offer your solution. So we want to go from one to the next. Um, the, the creating, the creating value is where your solution comes in. So it's not, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard this phrase, but it's like sell the, sell the sizzle, not the steak. You know, it's kind of that thing of benefits and features. We don't want to tell them all the benefit, all the features of your program or all the things that you can offer because that becomes overwhelming. And the fact of the matter is, is people only retain about 7% of what they hear. And nowadays, I mean, they say we have the attention span of a guppy. So, so it's like getting worse, not better. Um, so when we're talking into the solution, the transition and the, the point there for you is to go from, you know, what is the hell they're living in and what do they want to create for themselves? What, is, what would their life look like if they could change their current situation? And if they can change their current situation with your solution, your tool, then you've created a win-win. And then it's just a matter, again, of just making the offer and, and closing the sale. So the transition is what I call the permission stage. This is a step that is really critical for people to understand that they're in this together with you. And it would sound something like, hey, you know, Cameron, I, it's pretty clear to me, I'm sure it's clear to you that my X can satisfy your Y. So would it be okay with you if I just go ahead and tell you how we can work together? <laughs> no one's gonna tell you no. I mean, and if you don't feel, by the way, <laughs> that this is a fit, you can do one of two things. You can say, I have a great colleague that I think would be perfect for you and they specialize in X, Y, Z. Why don't I go ahead and refer you over to that person? Or you could say, it doesn't sound, Tony, like you're fully, completely committed to taking action today. So what I prefer to do is send you my free gift. It could be like your ebook. Um, it could be a, a, a meditation video. It could be whatever it is that you specialize in. What I'd like to do is send you my gift. And when you're ready to, to tell me that you're more committed in taking action and, and, and will be more coachable, um, I'm happy to talk to you a little bit about the way we can work together. Does that sound fair? So you wanna just make sure that you're continuing to get yeses all the way through, <coughs> excuse me, all the way through the, um, the stage of the conversation. So let's dive in a little bit more so you understand what I'm talking about. So first, you wanna just acknowledge them. This is how you create boundaries on your calls. I see so many practitioners tell me this all the time. They will do, you know, uh, schedule a 20 to 30 minute call and before they know it, it's an hour and a half or an hour and 15 minutes. And the person has come in obviously has been suffering and has been in pain for a long time and they come in and they just want to dump their entire life story onto that practitioner. And what ends up happening with us is it's frustrating because it's, it's a lot of energy, right? And we're also taking on all that person's stuff too. So having boundaries is really important for your own sanity and your own self-care and your own mental health. And also I'm now the, the prospect. I understand that you are the authority and I'm going to trust you more, not just because you have the white coat on, I'm going to trust you more because you're giving me boundaries and I know that I can play with inside those boundaries with you. So the first thing is acknowledging somebody. So it may sound something like, you know, Sally, I'm super thrilled that we, that you decided to book a call with me today. Let me just tell you how this is going to go. And this is where we transition into the authority conversation. We have exactly 30 minutes together on the phone today. So what I'd like to do is ask you some questions. And then if I feel like we're a fit at the end of this call, if you would like, we can share how we can work together. Does that sound okay to you? Does that sound fair to you? And then from there, you just want to self-edify. So as you know, I've been a practitioner for 10 years, 20 years, whatever the case may be, and I specialize in XYZ. 
So let's dive in right now into, you know, why it is today that you called me. And then I would just go straight into, so by the way, where, where do you live? Like, where are you calling from? And now I'll just go in and build rapport. So I hope that makes sense. So the main critical point here that I want to serve for all of you is to understand that the more yeses you get in the beginning, the more yeses you'll get at the end of your conversations. What we tend to do is we tend to vomit all of our clinical stuff on top of somebody, especially if they came to us and we already had an intake and we know that they were suffering from something. And we say, these are all the things that are wrong and this is what needs to happen and this is how we're gonna fix it. And that's not emotional. That's very logical. You may feel it's emotional because you're pouring your heart and soul into your career, which makes sense, but they're not looking at it from those terms. So self edifying yourself is huge around this small little window of time because number one, it does set you up as authority. And number two, now you get to basically move into building relationship with them and not have to worry about the, um, the clinical stuff as much. One thing also that's really important on these calls is to not go down a rabbit hole, a rabbit hole, excuse me, of coaching people and giving them too much of yourself. This is why I know so many beautiful practitioners and so many great healers that are broke. They're broke because they're giving away their services. And I've had so many people say, you know, if I could do it for free, I would. And I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, because we want to be of service and we also need to have boundaries for ourselves. So if I took a poll of everybody on this call right now, I could probably guarantee you that 75% of you are probably undercharging for your services anyway. And it's hard for us to ask for money. It's a worthiness thing for us, not for them necessarily. So with, as you get more comfortable with having these conversations, and you can even do the same thing in your office, by the way. You know, I have about 20 minutes to talk to you and I wanna learn a little bit more about you. And you just go through these exact same steps that where you're controlling it. And at the end, if I feel like we're a fit to work together, I'm happy to let you know how we can do that. Does that sound okay? So let's go into how we actually control the call. So building rapport and listening. So the first things that you want to do is let them know that you're going to start off with a few questions and tell, you know, tell me a little bit about you. So I just usually say, let's dive in. If the person starts to ramble, and I mean this with all um, love and <laughs> love, if, if they start to ramble, though, I want you to interrupt them because this is where you will continue to gain control and authority of your call. And it can sound something like what I wrote here, like, excuse me for interrupting. Can I ask you a question? And you can come up with whatever question, open ended question. You know, where do you work? What do you do for work? Um, what's your family life like? And some of these questions are actually, um, they're great discovery questions because I want to know if this person has a spouse at home or if they have children at home, what their life is like at home. Meaning like if I'm suffering from something and I'm coming to you to solve my, my ex problem, does this person have a support system? You know, are they going to be compliant? Is it going to be difficult for them? Um, you know, anything like that. But by me asking like, oh, so what do you do for work? I'm, I'm all, what I'm listening to is, are they stressed out? Are they overworked? Um, what is their financial status? You know, I want to know, like if they're unemployed, I want to know that before I'm going to make them a, a 20K offer at the end. So, so really listening to what they're saying, actively listen, and also finding common ground. Oh yeah, you know, I live in, I live in Southern California too. Oh my God, it's hot out here right today for, for us for a December day, you know? whatever, whatever it is that you're just kind of connecting the dots and finding common ground with them. So at the end of that, I would say, great, thank you so much for sharing with me. And now I wanna get into a little bit more what's, what's challenging you and why you decided to call me today. So I'm just gonna ask you some questions. If you had a magic wand, what would you, life, what would you want your life to look like six months from now, a year from now? Um, I usually recommend for my practitioners to try to gauge it based on the results that you get you give to your people so in other words if you have a six month protocol then i would say what would you want your life to look like three to six months from now um and you know understanding that um you could even go further and we're going to get into moving deeper here in a second but really understanding like what do they want what do they want out of their life and and really like i even have people close their eyes by the way have them close their eyes if they're on the phone say would you mind doing an exercise with me could you just close your eyes for one minute? And I want you to imagine, imagine, like if you had a magic wand, what would your life look like after doing this work for a year? And then really listen into that and pour into them at that, at that stage. So you're really listening. 
And then I want you to just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper in some of the questions that I have. And if you don't have a script and you're interested in doing anything with the script, um, feel free to reach out to me. Again, I'll have the contact information at the end. Scripting is really good. What I say about having a script is have a script like this that you can follow, but then learn it and throw it away because you want to be really real with people. And they can tell, obviously, if you're reading from something. But, um, you know, what's keeping you up at night? And it could be like, I can't play with my grandkids anymore. You know, I'm afraid I'm going to have a heart attack, whatever. I mean, they're just, what is keeping them up at night? What's stressing them out? And then this is a critical line that I want you to get used to saying. I want you to go deep. The reason I put this in red is because it's the tonality of this. You're going to drop your tone and say, can I ask you a question? And this is where you go from here to here, very heart centered. What is X, let's say the, uh, the weight gain or the menopause or, you know, whatever, whatever, right? What is it costing you in your life? What, what are you suffering from and what is it costing you in your life? So the reason I want you to get to that is because they will tell you everything. They will tell you everything they need to tell you down to, you know, I'm not intimate with my, my spouse anymore, or, um, you know, my, my kids and I don't have a relationship, you know, they're, you know, I, I can't get out of bed, whatever it is. Um, you know, I want you to be really serious at this stage, because this is where you're moving deeper and you're forming a different relationship with them. Then the next question is, so if you do nothing today, like nothing, if you take no action today, where do you think you're going to end up a year from now, three years from now, five years from now? And see how serious they are. This is a very cool question to ask people because you're going to be able to gauge whether you're, they're ready to be your client or not. And then the next question is on a scale of one to 10, how serious are you taking action today? Give me, give me a number. All right. So I always say go deeper, go home. Don't waste your time and don't waste their time. If people are on the phone with you or they're you know, just kind of skimming the surface and they're not willing to go deep, they're not willing to close their eyes, they're not willing to, to imagine their self and visualize that, they're probably not your person. And I mean that because they're, they're going to be uncoachable. They're going to fall out. They're not going to be compliant. They're going to be kind of more of a pain for you to track down, et cetera, et cetera. If you have a group program, these same questions apply because you also want them to be compliant in your group program. You want them to be part of your community and you want them to know that they're going to be a supporter and a cheerleader. And even though they might be going through some pain and suffering, you know, and so is the rest of that group. Um, what's great is when they are supporting each other and building each other up, obviously, right? And it also helps you gain testimonials because you can always look at someone's life and say, you were here, now you're here. I would love to be able to share your results with other people. And this is a great thing for you to be doing anyway, is getting testimonials on a regular basis. So let's go to the next one. So now we move from that and all the pain points and you just say, you know, I just want to relate this kind of back to you and let's talk a little bit about my services. And this is a good point now where you're not selling your service, you're, you're enrolling them back in their vision. So, you know, Tony, when you told me that you wanted to be, you know, on the beach, you know, or on a cruise in your bikini a year from now, well, I can help you make that happen. And here's how I do it. And you just want to kind of give them like a, a an overview of the program what the solution is and where it goes, right? So I so I put this in here. So thanks for sharing that with me. Um, there is clearly a pretty big gap from where you are and this beautiful vision you have for yourself. Would you agree? Again, another yes. Great. Would you like to hear a little bit more about how I can solve that? So these are great leading questions. At this stage, usually what I will do is if you have stories of clients you've worked with, bring them up. You know, when I worked with Jane, we went through the exact same thing. She didn't have any understanding of how to, you know, lose the weight. Um, you know, she was overeating, she was binge eating, she was an emotional eater, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And how I supported her was this way, and these were the results she got. So testimonials will sell, stories will sell. People love to talk in stories. So if you are a story talker, that's really great because people want to hear that. They just relate better to it. Um, and you can just say something like, can you see how this would help you? And would this be valuable to you? Do you feel like these steps would be valuable to you? So here we're going into the transition and again, asking that permission. So this is a great way just to transition for you. It's a bridge that you just say, I think it's as clear to you as it is to me and use their name, by the way, people want to hear their name, uh, that working with me, we can solve these problems. So I feel like you're a perfect candidate for my program. Would you agree? And then you go into another yes. And 
and then you can go in and explain how they can work, how the two of you can work together. But you're asking these questions all the way through so that you keep getting yeses. You know, would you like me to explain how, how we can work together? Yes. Uh, would you agree? Yes. You know, does this sound fair to you? Yes. All of those little yeses that go along. And then the last thing is just the commitment. It's the offer, right? So what I do with my clients is we work a lot with signature brand products. So I'll help them craft their signature brand product or and program um, or pricing and packaging, you know, just to make sure that they have a, a, a full offer. But I'm a big, huge component of having two offers. I believe that people need to make decisions. There is so much science on cognitive dissonance and how we make decisions and our brains are wired to make a decision. You know, we will look for the less cognitive load and just to make a decision just so we're, you know, our brains are in survival mode. And there's just so much around this. So if I give you one or two options, automatically your brain is wired to go one or two. But if I give you one, I'm gonna think about it. If I give you three, I'm gonna think about it. So you wanna be able to like narrow it down in your offer conversation so that you stay really crystallized on that conversation with them. So what I recommend is say, hey, my program's really simple. There are three main bullet points to my program and that's all you're saying, boom, boom, boom. We meet you know, every other week for 30 minutes, it includes lab testing and your supplements. You're just like, whatever the highlight is. And, you know, you might say, and it's for six months, something to, to that effect. I want you to use the word investment, not the money. You know, it's like, of course, there's an investment associated to it. And the investment looks like this. Choice A, I always believe start at your highest price point. So I want you to start at like a paid in full price point. So if you have a six month program, do the math. If you haven't done this math, by the way, do the math figure out what's going to look like to work with you for an extended period of time. Give them a little bit of a discount if they pay it in full and then break it down to the monthly dues, the monthly ridiculous, right? So it might look like, you know, option A is X and you fill in the blank with your three bullet points and that's $39.97 paid in full. You basically get a 10% discount or option B is you can do it in three simple payments of $12.67 per month. And here's the critical part here is when you, when you can see why most of the clients will go with A, keep it light and keep an even laugh. Like, like just be like super light about it because the more um, intense you make it about the money, the more intense they're going to, they're going to want to think about it. We don't have a lot of time to go over any objections. We're going to do that on another call for sure. Um, because there is a deep dive and I know that most people want to learn about objections. But I will say this from my heart of hearts, if you can learn how to do the discovery call really, really well, then the objections are minimal and you won't feel like you're just going after the person just to overcome the objections. I also say your fortune is in your follow-up. So make sure you're always following up with people. You should have some type of a system. I do teach this. I teach a product for wellness professionals called the perfect sales formula. It's a six week course. And in that course, I have an entire module just on the follow-up system. It's so critical because people do, we are human. We are going to want to think about it. We are going to want to talk to our spouse. We are going to, you know, look at our time value. And all of these things actually are emotional barriers. And so there are, there is some art to working around the emotional barriers for sure. Um, so getting back to your offer, once you've made this offer, what's really important for you to do is then now close the offer. And what I mean by that is now I want to guide my prospect into making one of two decisions. So is it gonna be paid in full or is it gonna be monthly? And so you just say, out of these two, which one are you more comfortable with today to join right now? So as I was saying, our brains are wired. And so the, the words that we wanna use are things like feeling, right? Cause it's an emotional component. So which of these two programs do you feel is best for you? Not that you can afford, not that, you know, it's gonna work for you. It's just like, what do you feel that out of these two programs is, is feels the best for you. And then another way you could say that too is, you know, out of the two programs, which one are you leaning towards? Once we get to that space, that space right then and there, that's when we have, we get to have the conversation about how they're going to enroll and you'll get more yeses, <coughs> excuse me, along the way, if you're asking those yeses up front. And so when we get down to this point, it may be a money thing. It may be like, oh, I got to figure out some money. Excuse me. <coughs> <clears throat> coming off a of cold. So <coughs> it may just be, excuse me, figuring out 
you know, how to enroll them in the possibility of creating the money for themselves. It may be, you know, what other areas of your life can you, uh, you know, where can you put this, your focus, your financial focus into this area of your life and release something else in your life? Um, another great thing to say to people is if they start to feel uncomfortable about the money or about enrolling, I always say something to the effect of like, let's just put a pin in that, take it off the table for a second. I just want to go back to what we talked about earlier. You told me that what it was costing you, <clears throat> you told me you're a 10. So why don't we just figure this out together? If you have that rapport with them, they're going to feel like you're their partner and not that it's salesy, right? And it's not going to be for everybody because some people truly do have objections and they truly do want to go home and talk to, talk to their spouse. Those things are real. What I would do at that point though, especially if this is a phone call, is I want to make sure they're a yes for themselves. I want to make sure you're a hundred percent yes or a hundred percent no, because they may be giving you a smoke screen and telling you one thing, but maybe they're not really bought into the fact that they want to work with you. So you want to ask those questions like, can I just, I'm just curious. I'm just kind of interested. What is it right now that's holding you back? And so if you can get to that point and they go, no, I really need to talk to my husband and you feel that, then I would say, you know what? I tell you what, I'm going to leave this offer available for you for the next 24 hours. Why don't we go ahead and schedule a call and I'll follow up with you tomorrow or next week or whatever it is. Don't let them go too far out actually, but, but keep them in your sphere, you know, make sure that you're saying, and don't be afraid to say, you know, it sounds like you need to think about it, Jane. Why don't you go home and think about it? I'm going to give you 24 hours because I know you want to take action on your life right now. And I'm going to give you a call tomorrow at two o'clock. Does that work for you? So again, this is where we get into follow-up. We get into objections. We get into more of that. I also wanted to uh, really encourage you going into 2020 one of the first things I teach my practitioners in my, in my uh, sales training is to make sure you have objectives for yourself. So really sit down and think, what do I want to make for, for 2020? What does that look like on an annual basis? And then break it down. What is that monthly? What is that weekly? What is that daily? And what activities do I have to do to make sure I have enough leads to funnel into that bigger vision for my financial wins? So really pay attention, track everything, by the way, Pay attention to how many calls am I having? How many potential clients are coming into my office? What is my turnaround? What am I spending on my marketing dollar? You know, some of you I'm sure are pretty savvy at all this, especially if you've had a brick and mortar for a while, but really sit back and think about it, especially between now and, you know, going into January. What, you know, what, how many leads do I need to have to sustain myself? And what is the activities that I need to do? Because if I'm treating patients all day long, I also need to be selling my services. So how can I find a really happy balance between those? Maybe your clinic's big enough that you need to hire somebody, you know, to run, to run the sales. Maybe um, you can specifically have one day a week where you're doing follow-up, um, you know, or a certain time in the morning, a certain time in the evening, or even on a weekend, but really sit down and say, what is the activity I need to do? And then the last thing is to remember your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? like everything around you for your family, for your friends, for yourself, for your business, for your patients, what is your general why? And then let's go into 2020 with that vision. Okay. So I appreciate you all being here. I see that we have a pretty large group, so I hope this served you and I'm sure we'll see you on the repeat. The last thing I just wanted to say again is you can contact me You can just go directly to my website, Tony Lynn Davis. That's Lynn with one N Tony Lynn Davis.com forward slash contact. There's an button right there where you can email me your questions. There's my how to build a brand legacy uh, ebook that's right on my website. You can go ahead and grab that. You can schedule a, a call with me. If you want to do a coaching call, I'm happy to do a 30 minute coaching call with you as well. So anything that you need, go ahead and go to this, um, go to this URL and I'll be on the other side of that. So thank you all. Have a beautiful holiday. Take care.